In today's video, I'll talk about a topic that's really famous, and that is PC build versus pre-built PC. Which one should you buy? Before answering this question, I want to say that if you find helpful information throughout this video, leave a like and subscribe, but most importantly, hit the bell button so you get notified when I upload this type of content. Now, straight to the question, which one is better, PC build or pre-built PC? Well, the answer is really easy. It depends. And let me explain. But before explaining, you need to know the difference between the three systems. And what I mean by this is the difference between a PC build, an OEM ProBuild PC, and a system integrator ProBuild PC. Because ProBuild PCs are different from each other. So you need to know the difference first. OEM ProBuild PCs, or Original Equipment Manufacturer, means that the company manufactures all of the components on the ProBuild Gaming PC, or most of them. I give you a couple examples like HP and Lenovo. These two companies manufacture the GPU for example so they are not going to have an MSI RTX 3060 they are going to have an HP or a Lenovo RTX 3060 and that's why usually OEM systems are cheaper than system integrators because on a system integrator companies like Skytech I buy power, cyber power PC, they don't manufacture their components, they just buy them and assemble them and then sell it to you. Basically, it's a PC build, but they build it for you at a cheaper price, or at least most of them. So what's the main difference? Well, basically OEM systems are cheaper, but are not that upgradable. And then system integrators usually have a worse performance at the same price than OEM systems, but these are more upgradable down the line. So if you want something that's upgradable, then you want a system integrator but if you don't care about upgradability you just want a gaming pc to play you want to plug it in play games with good performance then you can go with any of these two a system integrator or an oem system but keep in mind that system integrators are usually more expensive than oem systems so if you're working on a budget i would actually go with an oem system but if you have between a thousand and two thousand dollars i would actually go with a system integrator don't worry about it if you're still choosing between probable pcs i have a whole video about the best probable pcs of the month that I've made a couple days ago, so if you want to check that out, you can watch it in the top right of the screen. And it's really important for you to see that video if you're still choosing between pre-built PCs. Now on a PC build, basically you pick a component and it's all on you. Now there's a positive and a negative. The positive side is that because you have all the control, you get more knowledge about components and gaming overall, and you get the experience of building a gaming PC by itself, which is pretty easy. The hard part here and the negative side is that these components have to be compared with each other you can go with an amd motherboard and put an intel cpu because that's not compatible so you gotta have some knowledge before building your pc because like i said a pc build has to be compatible but you can always ask someone that knows about pcs to send you the part list and then you build it by yourself or you have someone else to build it for you. Another positive for PC builds is that these are more upgradable. Of course, if you buy a good power supply and if something fails on this gaming PC, usually you end up figuring out the error and fixing it, which is something really positive because like I said before, you get more knowledge. So now I'm going to compare an OEM system with a system integrator PC with a PC build, both for a low end budget and a medium end one. So you get what I'm saying. When I say that an OEM system, I think it's your best option just for gaming under $900 and why it's better to buy a system integrator or a PC build with a medium end budget. We are going to start with the low end budget with the Big Zeus by HP. This one has the i5-12400, the TTX 1660 Super, AX of RAM on dual channel. This means that it has two sticks of four gigabytes and this will give you a little bit more performance than if it just was one stick of RAM and then you get 256 gigabytes of SSD. All of this for $850. Now in my opinion this is a great system if you don't care about upgradability. Like I said before this is an OEM system so if you really don't care about upgrading the GPU, CPU in the future, you don't want to open this PC at all, then this one I think is the right one for you. Then we have a system integrator which I don't recommend you buying at all for the price. Like I said before I think system integrators are good from $950 to above and this one is the Iver Power Slate MR gaming desktop this one has the i3 10100f which believe me is way worse than the i5 11400 for both gaming and multitasking it also has 8 gigabytes of ram which is not good but on the other pc at least you had two sticks of four gigs here is just one stick of 8 gigabytes of ram so it's single channel this is terrible you should upgrade it as soon as possible if you end up buying this pc which i don't recommend at all and then you get the gtx 1650 on the other pc you got the gtx 1660 
60 Super, which is by far a better option for gaming. And here you get 480 gigabytes of SSD, which is a little bit more than the Big 2's 15L, but you can actually make those upgrades on the HP One, you can upgrade the RAM and you can upgrade the storage by clicking on Customize and Buy, so you can actually do those upgrades on the OAM system. And the total price here is 850 bucks, so the same price, but you're getting way worse performance. So if you're searching a PC for gaming, on this case, definitely you should buy an OEM system if you want to buy a private PC, of course, because now I'm going to compare it with a PC build. But if you want a private PC, then an OEM system for the price is going to be better overall for you. One thing I forgot to mention is that this system integrator is not that upgradable either because it has a 400 watts power supply. So yes, you can upgrade the RAM, you can upgrade the storage, but if you want to upgrade the GPU to a higher end GPU, to maybe like a 3060 or a 1660 Ti, then you will have to upgrade the power supply as well. I would recommend to at least a 500 watts gold power supply if you're just going to upgrade the GPU to the 1660 Ti. But if you also want to upgrade the CPU to maybe like a 97 or an i5 12400, then I would recommend at least a 600 watts power supply. And now let's see the PC build. For the PC build I made, I put a CPU, I put the i5 11400F for the CPU because I wanted to make this as cheap as possible. So the price is similar to the private PCs. Now I could go with a 12400, but the price was going to be much higher because of the CPU price difference and also the motherboard price difference. So I wanted to make it as cheap as possible. Don't blame me for this. Of course, I will put an i5 12400, but we are comparing PCs for the price right now. Then for the CPU, I picked the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition. This one is going to be a much better option on a budget than the stock Intel CPU cooler, which is terrible basically. Then for the motherboard, I went with the Ace Rock H570, a great motherboard for the price. For the memory, I picked 16 gigs of RAM of CL16 at 3200 MHz at only $54, which is once again great for the price. Then for the storage, I picked 500 GB of SSD for 50 bucks. For the case, I went with the Corsair 4000D Airflow. This one is great for the airflow basically, so you're not going to have any issues with temperatures on this PC. Then for the power supply, I went with a 750 80 plus gold power supply. So if you want future upgradeability, because you can upgrade things like the GPU and CPU down the line with a high end GPU. Let's say you want to put the RTX 3060 Ti on this gaming PC, it's totally fine and it's totally possible and that's why I picked a 750 watts power supply and then for the most important part for gaming, for the graphics card, I picked the RX 6500 XT. I know it has a lot of bad reviews but it's really cheap and it's going to perform similar to the GTX 1650 Super so it's not a bad deal at the end of the day if you want a super budget gaming PC and you want to build it by yourself. Of course, I recommend you upgrading the GPU down the line but if you're just going to play at 1080p 60fps average or even 144 frames per second on games like Valorant and CSGO, this one is actually going to be a great option for you and the total price will be 980 bucks. Now yes, it's $130 more expensive than their private PCs but this is because of the GPU market basically, the market nowadays is much more expensive than it was before so you have to keep that in mind. You're paying $130 more and you have to build it by yourself which can be a negative for you or a positive. I think it's a positive because you get the experience but maybe you don't want to build it by yourself but you want this PC build then you will have to have someone to build it for you but I think that for the price that you're paying actually $980 it's a great gaming PC for 1080p gaming and if you want to compare it with the Big 2's 15L for the performance right now it's actually going to be worse yeah the Big 2's 15L has only 8 gigs of RAM but, but like I said before you just go on customize and buy change that and the price is going to be really similar to this PC build and you're going to have the i5 12th gen which is better than the 11th gen and then you're going to have the GTX 1660 Super which is going to be a way better option than the RX 6500 XT for the same price. So like I said before, if you're looking for something to play right now, you don't care about upgradeability, then go with the OEM system. But if you care about future upgradeability, you don't really care about performance right now. Although this PC is going to be great for 1080p, then the PC build is for you. And I'm talking about at a low end budget. Now we are going to compare things at a medium end budget. Now for the medium end gaming PCs, we are going to start once again with the OEM system. This one is the Alienware R10 gaming desktop. This one has the Ryzen 7 58 hand width, which is a really, really good CPU. Then for the GPU, which is the most important part for gaming, you get the RTX 3060. I guess it's not that terrible, but for the price that you're paying, I think it's a little bit overpriced, but we are going to talk about that in a second. Then you get 16 gigabytes, 2x8, 3200 megahertz. Once again, 3200 megahertz, I think it's really good. For Intel. I think that for AMD, I would go with at least 
3600 megahertz so i think that's kind of a bad deal but i guess it's decent 3200 megahertz at the end is not terrible it's not the end of the world so we are not going to make it this hard for dell and then you get one terabyte of hard drive and this is where i think you shouldn't buy this gaming pc basically for 15 hundred dollars you're getting one terabyte of hard drive instead of one terabyte of ssd you are not getting a gaming pc that's upgradable of course not only because it's an oem system because you can get like the omen 45l at two thousand dollars which is upgradable actually and it's an oem system but you're getting a 550 watts of power supply so you have no room basically for any upgrade if you have any and the airflow overall for this alien war r10 is not going to be great i'll tell you that it doesn't specify that it has a liquid cpu cooler so that ryzen 7 5800 is going to run really hard if you don't have at least 120 millimeters all-in-one liquid cooler that's at least what you have to have on this type of gaming desktops so at the end i don't think it's even worth the price so don't buy this pc but we are comparing it with other pre-built and pc builds so let's compare it and then i'll give you my conclusion for the system integrator we have the skytech place gaming pc from new egg this one is 1500 dollars and it comes with the i7 11700f it's going to perform really similar to that ryzen 7 5800 in both multitasking and gaming then you get the RTX 3060 Ti which believe me there's a huge difference between the 3060 and the 3060 Ti you get one terabyte of SSD not hard drive so it's going to be way faster and one terabyte of hard drive is becoming basically a bottleneck on the other gaming PC so you want at least one terabyte of SSD you get 16 gigs of RAM at 3200 MHz like I said before 3200 MHz is great for Intel so this one has an i7 11700F so it's actually going to work great with the CPU and then you get a 600 watts gold power supply I think this is the only downside for this pc like i said before if you want future upgradeability i would change the power supply to at least a 750 gold power supply but this is the only downside because then you get a 240 millimeters all-in-one liquid cooler for the i7 11700f and you get a front mesh panel so overall the airflow for this pc is going to be really decent you're going to have great temperatures and you're going to have a way better gaming experience than you would have had with the alien war aurora basically you get a better ssd you get a better gpu you get a liquid cooled cpu and it's also upgradable for the same price 1500 dollars you will have the link down below in the description like i said before so don't buy an oem system if you have a medium end budget which is from 1000 to two thousand dollars so to answer your question again if you need to buy a private pc or a pc build you have to see case by case and you have to do a lot of research before buying one of these systems because you don't want to mess it up and go with an oem system at this price point but with that being said let's compare it with the pc build that i made so the pc build is actually more expensive as expected it's 1572 dollars but i think it's worth the price difference and i'll explain why in a second for the cpu i picked the i7 11700k for the cpu cooler i picked the 240 millimeters all-in-one arctic cpu cooler for 90 dollars again great for the budget i picked the asus prime h570 once again great for the price 16 gigs of ram at 3200 megahertz cl16 memory for intel is going to work great you can go of course with 3600 megahertz but for 1080p and 1440 p gaming which is what you're aiming here going to be great you don't need any upgrades then you get one terabyte of m.2 ssd not one terabyte of far drive please do not buy one terabyte of far drive at the price point then you get the msi rx 6600 xt which is going to be better than the alien world rtx 3060 but it's going to fall behind this guy takes place 3060 ti so it's better than the 3060 but it's worse than the 3060 ti so the gaming performance for this one is going to be a little bit worse than this guy takes place gaming pc but this one is more upgradable down the line because i picked an 850 watts 80 plus gold power supply then for the case i picked the corsair 4000d just like the last build so the airflow overall is going to be great temperatures are going to be great and it's upgradable but on this case i think both a pc build and a private pc are great options for the price and this depends on what you want to do if you want the experience of building it by yourself go with the pc build if you don't care about building it by yourself you just want performance go with the system integrator so that was my whole explanation video if you found it helpful like i said leave a like and subscribe but most importantly hit the bell button but again it's really important that you see case by case because it all depends on your needs and your budget so you can't have a straight answer like yes a private pc is better or yes a pc build is much better 
because for some people a probable PC is going to be much better and for some people a PC build is going to be much better. I hope this video was helpful to you and remember that you have all the links to everything I mentioned down below in the description and if you want a probable PC or a PC build I have plenty of videos on my channel about both. I basically update PC build and probable PC videos every week because the market keeps changing so I need to make new lists. So thank you guys for watching, thank you for the support and I see you on the next one.